जय हिंद देश वी आर अगेन बैक विद आवर वार्तालाप सेशन एंड टूडे इन आवर कारगिल सीरीज वी हैव अ वेरी स्पेशल गेस्ट सिंस लास्ट ट्वेंटी थ्री ईयर्स वी हैव हर्ड अ लॉट अबाउट कैप्टन कैंगरूस फ्रॉम टू राजरीफ महावीर चक्र एंड he was he has been our hero since our childhood we grew up idolizing him his bravery whenever i have met colonel mb ravindranath sir the then commanding officer of two rajrif he always used to share stories of captain kangaroos with so much of pride we all have heard about his bravery how he climbed up the steep mountain barefoot without shoes and climbing up reaching the top how he fought bravely with dagger single handedly he was very brave and he was very kind too we have heard from our charulata akka his love for major padmapani acharya his bonding with captain uh, captain thapar vijayan thapar but you know the hero was not just born in a single day the he grew up to be a hero and today we have with us his brother who will share the story of the making of a hero his childhood memories his growing up days so welcome bhaiya thank you so much for joining us and sharing the sharing your memories with captain kangaroo sir so thank i would you. request you to uh, start like you were uh, you were the second brother just after captain kangaroos right i am the so second so you were brother. very close you were very, you were the very close to him how we were close as a brother and as also as a friend friend as exactly friend. so i would request you to share your growing up days going to schools together and your all the naughty things and brotherly fights that all you used to share please tell us okay first and foremost uh, thing thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to share about my brother um actually we were uh, we were a big family with 13 children three of us were from the first mother and after the mother's separation we were brought up by our parents our, our grandparents and after uh, after our father got married again and then we get reunited with our parents get sorry uh, for the please continue please continue don't worry it's <clears throat> fine it's fine now um when we were uh, small as kids we used to go to a very uh, old primary uh, primary school made of patches where there were no walls partition so i can see my brother nibu in class 1 and my uh, the other elder brother who is in class 2 who is elder to nibu from my seat in class 8 because this school doesn't have any partition so though uh, i have two elder brothers one is elder to nibu but we are, i and nibu were very much closer and we always uh, work together play together and then we used to stick to each other all the time he is always the protector he will carry my bag to school and he will share his belongings with me play with me and help me in all my problems he played the role of a brother a sister and also an, a mother because i have no mother and i was very young then so he is always the one who is taking care of me unlike um, the two of us his elder brother and me nibu is always cool headed silent obedient to his grandparents and so our grandparents always teach us to be like me uh, <clears throat> god has given me given him a quality to love to be loved by all he is liked by everybody of course because of his character also and not only because of that 
but uh, maybe because he has a short life here in this world, he is loved by all. I remember I would like to share uh, some memories that I have with Nibu, but though it's very uh, blurry and unclear now, I have some uh, specific incident that I still do remember. I recall like it was just only yesterday and uh, uh, these things has happened. One one day, an inspector came to our school. He was a well-dressed, neat, well-dressed uh, man. He interacted with us. And then he gave sweets, this or, uh, ordinary orange-flavored sweet to class A and B. So during uh, recess time, I was so excited i showed it to my brothers and they requested me to share with them it was just an, a generic organ uh, orange flavored candy and just a little bit bigger than a pea but since they have requested we tried to share the uh, sweets and i put it in, in my mouth to break perhaps into three pieces but Unfortunately, it just slipped into my uh, <laughs> stomach. And now I told them that it has already gone in. Now uh, the elder brother, the eldest brother got angry. Nibu uh, just said, you should have shared with us. And then the, uh, he just went back to his class. After the class is over, he was waiting for me. In, um, though the elder brother has already uh, left us being disappointed, but Nibu wait for me. He took my bag. I can see he's not happy from his face, but he didn't say anything. And then that is how we came back. And those are some of the memories, uh, funny incidents that I can remember. Nibu at very young age was very far mature than uh, his age. He's uh, he was the kind of elder brother who never threw at the uh, tantrum, but composed and carried responsibility as an elder brother, uh, generally. Um, <clears throat> when we grew up together as uh, kids, as I've already uh, as I've mentioned, he's uh, the one who is always uh, taking care of me and course my younger ones also but because our father is a very poor man um, then he was only a great for government job holder so our family condition is very very poor and we have uh, 13 children 10 from the second mother so being the elder el elder members of the family the three of us were uh, have, were made to soldier some of the responsibilities. So during uh, this uh, vacation days, summer vacation, winter vacations, we used to collect firewoods and then uh, sell it, sometimes work in other people's paddy field and do this odd jobs to pay our fees and to help our parents in our admission time. When, um, unfortunately, in 1991, the eldest brother passed away. Then Nibu was the one uh, who was looking after us, uh, helping our father. So when he finished his graduation, he joined as a teacher. And when he wants, he wants to be, uh, uh, he wants to become an officer. So he was not satisfied only as a teacher, and he was. Uh, working hard to create the exams and fortunately he was able to uh, get through in the CDS but now he is having a problem saying if I go away uh, I'll be in the training for one and a half year during that time I won't be receiving any pay and who will look after you all because by then I have uh, one brother and one sister who were also in the college. Bhaiya, I will then, just 
up here. Uh, yeah. What in, what inspired him to join Indian Army? Why he wanted to join Indian Army? Any uh, any specific reason was there? Um, actually, <clears throat> he was uh, interested uh, to be a, to be a leader, a commander. Or he wants to lead people. So mm, that is one. The other thing is he likes uniform job because it is respected. And of course, um, he took up this job with the uh, intention of uh, uh, helping the nation at the same time helping the family. So this is how he opted for CDS. And then one and night, he prepared and he prepared by himself. Yes, he prepared by himself. He didn't go for any coaching. He has no uh, formal trainings. He, um, the then PRO of Nagaland, public relations officer of army, that are Colonel Robertson, and another uh, uh, person called JGK Kuti, who was the commanding officer of NCC then, these two people have motivated him. Though both of them are from the south, and he he wants to join the army, but because of his uh, financial condition and the family problem, he is finding difficulty. So one night we had a sitting together, and then we discussed. I told him, um, "You go ahead. I will leave my job. Uh, I'll leave my." Uh, studies for some time and you finish your training after that I will go and then for further study because then I was doing my BS again yeah so uh, finally he agreed and then he joined Indian Army but uh, unfortunately um, things didn't work out as we planned because he died right after uh, his commissioning, six months from his commissioning and he passed away. He has uh, written a letter to me from uh, Cargill on 8th June, which I would like to share with you all. Yes. Don, yes. He, he wrote to me like this. How are you? Uh, how are you doing as a teacher? Liking it? Well, teaching is an interesting profession. And as you also keep learning new things every time you teach, I am also enjoying my profession here, commanding my men and also leading them even in the worst of situation in which life and death is uh, a concern. I'm sorry for not being able to talk to you properly. I thought you will be in Kohima that day throughout. I know you are also concerned about the things that our family is facing, but do not worry. I will try my best and take care of things. I'm sorry that you have to look after yourself at this age, even when you have an elder brother. I have already told dad and mom how much money I can send home. I have told them that it would be sent to the brothers and sisters to them. So please talk it out with dad and mom. I hope I will be able to live as per my commitment. My dear brother, I don't know uh, if our sister Asenio has already told you. I have told her, but please pay attention to what I'm about to write now. I wonder if you are thinking about building your career in a better way. I don't mean to look down on your job, but the nature of your job is that you will remain as what you are throughout. You need to build up your image. I can tell you that an officer who might be uh, earning lesser pay than yours, but will be respected more as per the situation. In other words, his, uh, his sayings will be will have greater impact on other person. Remember this, 
that there are lots of people who with less equivalent quali qualification is doing much better than you. It is not because you cannot do, but because you have never tried. I want you to come up in life. Another thing which I would like to tell you about the relationship with um, uh, boys and girls. Remember that your relationship would should be healthy, both in front of the Lord and also uh, in front of men. You, the last thing which I want to tell you today is about myself and the situation in which I am in. There is nothing for you to worry about. This is just an information so that everything worked out well later. I have already been shifted to Kutwara trust sector where there are lots of problems going on between India and Pakistan. To tell you very frankly, our life over here are uh, in danger throughout. I have not informed our parents about it because uh, I don't want them to worry. If in any case, it is the will of God that I have to close my eyes from it, from this place. Please take care of dad and mom. They should be made to understand that I have been taken from this life to another better life. Take care of our brothers and sisters and be an example to them. None of you should feel sad. And all of you should forgive me if I have done anything wrong. As for me, I have nothing against any one of you. If I come back alive, I will tell dad and mom myself. But if I don't, please mm, tell them about Karmi and do respect her for she is my best friend. She cares for me a lot. Remember things I have written down in my, uh, the rest of the thing I have written down in my diary for dad and mom. Please take it out. There is nothing for you to worry, but I have written this for your knowledge. It it's a precautionary step I have taken so that nothing goes wrong even when I'm no more. Take care of yourself and keep praying for me. This is the letter he wrote from Cargill, which I received after his body arrived home. Okay. So uh, the incident, what he did in the war is uh, very well known to all of us, but as a brother and as an elder uh, brother, he is a he's a responsible person. He re he loves his brothers and sisters, especially me. He takes care of me very well, and not only that, he is loved by all of his friends. He is a very jolly person. He respects the elders, and he has shown very good examples. One thing that I, uh, when uh, he came for a holiday uh, to, in the month of uh, March, in the month of March, he visited almost all the relatives and all his friends. So even today, after he is no more, wherever I go, I meet, when I meet people, they used to tell me about his story, how they met for the last time and uh, what he said to them. All this is always an inspiration. I, even as a brother, sometimes I cannot even imagine how uh, he was able to meet all his friends, wish them, say goodbye to all of them, and then he left. This is how he left. And he has written uh, a personal letter to my father also about his situation which, uh, if needed be, I'll, uh, I will share with you. Sure, sure, Bhaiya, you we would love to hear, but I also want to say that the letter you just now read, it should be, it should be included in, a, in the textbook of children, you know, because whatever he has written, it's such a good guideline for every children to think about how to think about career, how to think about family, how to balance it. He also had planned, if he is not there, how to uh, continue life. He, see, bhaiya, he initially was worried to join Indian Army, thinking that what, how will his family survive? 
but when time came he never had a second thought to give up his life for the motherland he never thought of his family how his family will be uh, continuing but he sacrificed his life so it's amazing means he was such a wise person so clear about life so clear about his values amazing letter thank you so much for sharing it with us we learned a lot from that letter thank you okay <clears throat> the second thing is from uh, his diary this this is the letter i have received which he wrote to my parents and i have translated it into english uh, which he has written in our dialect i would like to share it also with please you. please Maya. Yeah, thank you um he wrote like this, I have never thought that I'll be writing a letter like this to you. But today I feel it is necessary to share my last message with you. Pakistanis has uh, encroached India border and have occupied some land. So we have moved to Dras and Kargil sector near Jammu and Kashmir. Very soon I will be sending my men into the battlefield. I know God will be with me and will protect me. But if God wants me to sacrifice my life here, I may not get another time to write to you again. I'm feeling very sad because I may not see you again. It is hurting me. But if God wants it that way, what can I do? I can't complain. If I don't come back alive, I want you to remember these few words of mine. Dear Daddy and Mommy, I love you very much. I have always tried to take care of you, make you proud, and keep you at ease. But however, I may not succeed in this short span of life. I have troubled and let you down in many ways. Please forgive me for all those mistakes. Both of you have loved me so much and have taught me to be a leader till the last day of my life. I'm so grateful. Thank you, mom and dad, for all the things you have done for me. My heart aches when I think of my brothers and sisters' future. My tears roll down as I write this. Please guide them up to, a, to be a good man and woman. Tell them that I love them very much. Tell grandma and grandpa that I miss them. Give my regards to all my relatives, our relatives, and friends. Tell them to forgive me if I have wronged any of them. Even if I tell you not to cry when I die, I know uh, that it is not possible. You, will, you all love me dearly, but comfort each other and be happy again with me in your memories. If I'm no more, Write to all my friends whose address are written in my diaries and tell them I love them. Mom and Dad, I want to share a personal matter with you. I have a girlfriend. Her name is Karmi. You must be knowing her too. But I love her and she loved me too. Last May, when I came for holiday, I asked for her hand and she agreed. So if I don't come back, please take care of her too. She loves me very much and she, has, uh, she is a true friend. We have shared each other's problem. She has, um, we have shared each other's problem. She had uh, truly, she had loved me truly. I know, uh, I know. So if I don't come back alive, please do something for her. In, uh, this is my humble request for her. Dear dad and mom, God, uh, good God bless you richly. May the Almighty give you good health and peace in your uh, mind. Always uh, your son. This letter has been translated from uh, his personal diary. <clears throat> he has, of course, he has written so many letters to all of us, but uh, uh, which we couldn't uh, keep safe it properly. But what we have today, we, uh, because of him, 
our family is now living at peace. Uh, dad and moms are now, uh, with the help of the government, they are also living peacefully. And uh, though nothing can replace the life of Nibu for us, he has made all of us proud and the family is uh, doing well because of even we are also living safe, full, uh, safely and peacefully because of his supreme sacrifice, Maya. He has actually uh, ensured the entire country remains safe at the cost of his own life. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, my phone is disturbing. No problem. No problem. No problem. And Bhaiya, uh, he must be the first Mahavir Chakra in your uh, in your place and near nearby. So... His sacrifice, his bravery must have inspired all the youngsters around. So can you please tell how it has impacted people around? Yes, very much. His life has been an inspiration to many youngsters. Many Naga have joined the Indian Army. As we all know, Nagas have got a prop, uh, has got insurgency movement here asking for independence. So uh, those 1980s, early 70s, we had, we had an anti-Indian feelings. And whenever we see, we, saw the, we see the armies, we used to hide away. Another problem with us is that because we don't, we, we don't know Hindi, when the Jawans ask any questions, any queries in Hindi, we cannot answer it to them properly. They get irritated, thinking that we, are do we don't want to talk to them. This is how uh, the real, uh, misunderstandings comes up and people are sometimes tortured uh, unnecessarily. So we, uh, during all those days, we have a very bad relation with army. I remember even me, myself, and my brothers hiding uh, when we see this army convoys or army patrolling. But today, after the death of Nibu, and of course, there are a lot of uh, this uh, ceasefire agreement have also signed. And because of Nibu, uh, the armies and the uh, people in general have come to, under, to a very big understanding. We don't have issues with them, very less issues these days. And then young, young people are inspired looking at him, uh, how the Indian people respect their soldiers, how they uh, honor them. And uh, even today, when Kargil Vijay Diwas is celebrated, many Nagas uh, voluntarily come and participate. And there are lots of, uh, uh, even the armies, the Assam rivals, they are giving free recruitment training where all the Nagas are uh, pursuing their career in this also. So I think. Because of my brother and his sacrifice, there have been a lot of uh, uh, inspiration in Nagaland. That's what I think. Not only Nagaland, Bhaiya, people from all the corners of India really, really loves Captain Kangaroos and draw inspiration and gets motivated from his bravery. I have seen like our, this group has around 11,000 members and I have seen everyone remembering, missing and loving Captain Kangaroos with so much of respect. And he has earned it. He has earned it with his own blood and sweat. And we are really grateful to Captain Kangaroos and to your entire family for the sacrifice that you all went through. It is not only his sacrifice, but it is the sacrifice of your entire family. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, 
yes uh, here actually bhaiya i am getting lot of messages that who are listening here they are saying that bahut acha lag raha hai then i got a message who which says display of indomitable courage and supreme sacrifice of life performing befitting duty for the motherland nation salutes this message is from a from a retired army officer so means thank you so much for coming here and sharing your memories sharing the life of captain kenguru so many things that we never knew so yes bhaiya please tell it is an honor and it's my pleasure and thank you so much for loving my brother and my family we are all honored i will definitely convey my uh, to my parents and my younger ones please, uh, please. About, uh, this interview about the people how do you are loving us all and uh, we are immensely blessed because of all of you thank you so much thank you so much bhaiya and we will be in touch and uh, it is really uh, a great honor to have you and listen to you also uh, mrs Bhav bhavna divedi wife of major cb divedi has messaged that uh, she met you last year on 26 july in kargil and she is also you. listening to you now and she is really uh, liking what you have said so Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We are indeed grateful to you. Please accept you. our convey our pranam to uncle and auntie. I will definitely do that. And thank you so much. I thought I have lost my brother, and I thought uh, his death has been. When he died, I was uh, uh, questioning the uh, justice of God. Why I have? Why do we have to live? always in this condition why can't we be like other people why can't we live like other people hum log dusra aadmi ki tarah jee nahi sakta hai all these questions i was doubting god but today with all these people loving my brother and because of all your love he is still alive today and uh, we are so happy that all everyone and all the nations have uh, given respect honor and love to all the all our family and i now i understand that he is not dead he is still alive thank Absolutely. you so much absolutely he is immortal thank you so much bhaiya jai hind jai hind